right then past me you need to give this thing a little bit of a um a tryout before you actually jump straight in because traveling backwards through time like traveling forward through time it's not easy and you'll get you'll have your um movements mirrored uh through here as kind of a uh, like if i was to move forward in the, i and i went through the machine i would then continue moving forward but i would see myself moving backwards and vice versa so it's a very complicated machine to try out so i would recommend giving it a try before you jump straight in, into the review um right okay Well, this is going to be challenging. Hmm. I might prefer to do things the other way. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a um, complicated thing over there. Um, maybe you could come back over here now. Now that you know what it's like, you can now move through time backwards just as easy as you can forwards. Well, maybe not as easily because you'll know what's going to happen and you might even cause some of it. Hmm. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Tenet, um, the latest film directed by Christopher Nolan. Um, it is a sci-fi um, spy thriller. Um, so Tenet, the story follows, I can't actually remember all the characters and names, but it follows this, uh, all, all the actors actually, but it follows this um, specific, specific secret agent um, who is then recruited to this organisation um, trying to fight this thing called Tenet which is a, another organisation which is a, um, gives things to this um, person who I do know is played by Kenneth Branagh um, to um, be able to move backwards through time um, like he's going through forwards in time but instead going, but it's going backwards in time instead and in, um, they, people from the future have, uh, have got him to try and change um, the future by kind of destroying it so that the future doesn't, isn't so um, effed up basically because uh, at the rate we're going we're gonna uh, mess up the planet and that's what the future is um why what the future is trying to avoid so they sent this guy back and or well, they're not sent him back they sent stuff back to him so he can travel backwards through time in order to cause um stuff from happening so the secret agent teamed up with another secret agent played by robert patterson have to try and stop him that's basically the gist of the plot that's two and a half hours more or less explained um but there's also another a subplot concerning the um the villain's uh, wife who's in a controlled relationship with him she's being forcibly controlled by him um and he won't let her go unless unless she gives up custody of his of their son um so she's kind of in a forced controlled relationship and soon she gets into the affairs of the of the primary um secret agent 
and soon becomes both a target and a hostage in times and then later also um, helping the two secret agents try to stop the main villain. So um, that's the plot of Tenet and honestly it's a great film but I do have one major problem. The sound of the sound design, it's too loud. There is it's too loud. The sound effects, the music, it's too loud. I'll give them props for this. They've got a really they got really good sound design, but it's too loud. I can barely hear what the characters are saying half the time. Especially in the more the more talky stuff, like when you've got some uh, spy talking spy talk or exposition, and it's difficult to follow what's going on because of the loud sound and music. I mean, the Christopher Nolan films have been known for doing having loud sound and sound effects and music, but not to this point where you can barely hear the dialogue. And I suppose maybe the dialogue here is a little bit more complicated because it's a spy for a film, but and also the whole travelling backwards through time thing as well. But it's still very difficult to make out due to the very loud sound, um, which doesn't really help the complicated storyline and uh, dialogue. Um, funny enough, this uh, the music this time around is by Ludwig uh, uh, Gur Gurusen, I believe, uh, Good Goodson, um, who did the music to Black Panther, R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman. Um, but instead of Hans Zimmer, as usual, who usually does the um, Christopher Nolan films, this time we got Ludwig Gur Gurusen. Um, so. Yeah, it's, so it's a bit, usually Zimmer does some loud sounds and music in the schools, but uh, Garrison seems to be upping the volume this time around, or someone in the sound editing department ups the volume for this film, because it's just really loud and it's very difficult to hear what the characters are saying. But thankfully we can hear what some of the characters are saying, and we can just about follow it, just about. Um, but the characters are pretty likeable, and the two secret agents and the... Um, wife in a controlled situation. They're pretty good characters, and the villain's pretty in, um, interesting in places as well. Um, the actors all do great jobs. Visuals, the visuals are absolutely stunning. Christopher Nolan once again knocks out the park in terms of visuals, um, with Hot, Hot Von Heitman doing the um, cinematography once again. Um, he's, I don't know if he's a regular, he's definitely done, he did. I think he did Interstellar, which, and it was a, there was a whole buzz about him doing Spectre because of that, uh, the 24th James Bond film. And then he did, I think he did Dunkirk, I could be wrong about that. Uh, but some great direct, um, direction of cinematography there. Um, and it's a pretty interesting, um, the doing the whole travelling backwards through time stuff, as well as the whole things moving backwards in time instead of forwards in time. It's a very good and interesting uh, story concept. And it makes for some interesting visuals as well, and some interesting stuff in the story. And yeah, I think it, I think this is a very good uh, handle it very well. I think the whole traveling backwards in time thing is probably a little bit complicated, but I think once if you've got a hand on the story like the filmmakers did, then I think you can just about work. And it's nice that some things later on in the film tie in with things earlier on, like the battle in the um, Oslo um, airport. Um, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called, but it's got this containment thing at the airport for art and stuff. Um, and there's a fight between the main characters and some these guard these guard guys, but it turns out it's the primary main character in the suit both times. Um, and the first time going backwards, and then the second time going forwards. Um, and that's a pretty that's pretty interesting, and it's nice that we tie in some of the things that have been said or seen on screen uh, earlier on in the film. Tying into later on, so we've got some good stuff and some great visuals. There we travel across um, the world, um, meet a couple of people, and do a couple of things. Also, Michael Caine does get a cameo in this film. Michael Caine has appeared in certainly all the Christopher Nolan films I've seen, um, which are, at the moment there's only five. That's five: The Dark Knight trilogy and Dunkirk. Although that was a voice cameo, and now here I also know he was in Interstellar and uh, Inception, uh, probably in a larger role in. Well, certainly in this Inception, probably, um, more likely, and possibly an Interstellar. But certainly he's in, he gets a cameo in this film. So that's always great to see. And so, yeah, most, uh, most of um, 
Tenet um, to talk about. Most of these are visuals, some great visuals, some great characters, some great music, even if it's a bit too loud. And overall, it's just really well done and an exciting plot, an exciting movie, and uh, masterfully put together. But that sound, the sound design is way too loud, and because it's too loud, it's difficult to follow the movie on uh, following the movie on exposition. And sometimes you kind of lose what's going on. And because we're traveling back in time and um, in uh, traveling in through um, backwards in time, as well as forward in time, and also uh, lots of things are happening all at once, it can be a bit difficult to follow what's going on, especially in that final act where you can it can be a little bit difficult to follow, but. Nevertheless, Tenet is still a really well put together film. If they turned down the sound a little bit, I think it would be a, a near masterpiece. I think it would be a masterpiece. So overall, I would I'll be giving Tenet a nine out of ten. is a visual masterpiece a great story and really brilliantly put together but it really needed to tone turn down the volume on the sound effects and some of the music because we need to be able to hear what those characters are saying and it sounds like a bit difficult it's a bit difficult to follow and it also kind of confuses the audience of what's going on at the time especially when you've got lots of things going on at the very same time like in the um, climax but nevertheless, Tenet is a very good film and a, a great film even. It could have been a masterpiece, but it just needed to turn that volume down a little bit and the sound effects and the music. Still really well put together and Christopher Nolan once again knocks it out of the park. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching this review and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <music>